Are you wondering how low can this market go? Are you thinking about buying the dip? If you are, please make sure you finish watching this video till the very end. Welcome to MarketCrash.Money. My name is Leonardo. In the previous video, we have gone over the pre-existing conditions that led to the market crash in 1987. We compared them to the current market environment in 2018. Well, in this video, we're actually going to take a closer look at the timeline, specifically what was taking place between October 14th for October 21st of 1987, and we're going to compare it to what has happened already between March 19th through March 23rd, which is today, and what could potentially the next week could bring on the 26th and the 27th of 2018 and beyond. To start off, I just want to mention a few days ago I posted an interesting video and I just observed an interesting coincidence which I wanted to share with you again real quick. On Monday the 19th of March that is, it was another Monday, another 19th and I put this video saying hey could it be another crash? And we took a look at the history a little bit closer and this is what we discovered, a very interesting fact going into this timeline where of course we know that you know what happened on uh, March 19th recently when Facebook caused all the fang stocks to tank at one point Dow was down 450 points but do you know what happened on October 5th 1987 which makes the timing of this whole thing quite interesting well for a few reasons okay here's what happened on October 5th 1987 Alan Greenspan was given his first testimony in front of Congress. The time of it is interesting because the market crash literally happens just a few weeks after he does his first testimony. Well, if we fast forward, 31 years later, Jay Powell gives his first ever testimony in front of Congress on February 27, 2018. And just a few weeks later, after he does that, okay, the markets start tanking on wow what a coincidence march 19th which happens to be the monday so we got of course the months are not matching we got october versus march but the monday and the 19th certainly does so the curious thing is is this and just to take it back a second this is what the markets are ended up doing um on monday the 19th Okay, so this is what starts happening on Wednesday, October the 14th. The markets start falling. They start falling on very specific news. The United States Congress has filed a legislation to eliminate tax benefits associated with financing mergers, which has become a very lucrative and profitable opportunity on Wall Street to make money in the 80s. So that opportunity was gone and investors quickly started reassessing the value of the takeover targets. Secondly, at the same time, as you can see right here on October 14th, the commerce report comes out on trade deficit. And the numbers are notably above expectations. On such news, the dollar starts rapidly declining and the expectations for the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates are definitely increasing. The next day, on Thursday, equity markets continued to decline. Some of this decrease was attributed to anxiety among institutions, especially pension funds, and among individual investors, which led to a movement of funds from stocks into relatively safely bonds. There was heavy selling during the last half an hour of the day and with heavier than usual activity from portfolio insurance. So that was on the 15th. On Friday, markets fall again. Friday the 16th. Selling accelerates due to technical factors. The S&P ends up being down 9 percent for the week so as you can see there has been a substantial decline in the few days preceding to going into monday the 19th so what actually takes place on 
Monday the 19th. A ton of things take place. In the morning, the markets are completely off balance. A large imbalance in the number of sell orders. It's a situation where a lot of stocks are not even going to be open for trading till later in the day. And to be specific, only 11 stocks out of 30 Dow stocks were traded that morning. Only 30% of S&P stocks were traded that morning. When the stock market gapped down on Monday the 19th, the computer programs continued to sell stocks. So the heavy selling that started on Friday actually intensified on Monday by the computer program and all algorithms and machines. What made the matters even worse is the Security and Exchange Commission chairman commented that he was at some point going to stop trading, which created a total chaos. People were afraid that they're not going to be able to get their money, they're not going to be able to close out their positions on time, so that intensified selling even further. Now, some news comes out on the announcement of the buybacks, and that contributes to actually some buying the following day. But in the meantime, a very important announcement comes out on Tuesday the 20th. The CME, the options exchange, the futures exchange, typically has all the margin calls settled by lunchtime. Well, at this point, it's not able to collect all the money due by lunchtime. So the rumor spreads out that CME could be closing. So that creates a sell-off even after the market tries to go higher on Tuesday after the Federal Reserve issues a statement that will provide liquidity to the markets. After the markets come off trade and hold around 1 o'clock, we're finally seeing somebody brave enough to go out there and put roughly 150 bullish purchase on 150 of contracts on the Chicago exchange on CME and after that all of a sudden the market gets its momentum so to review everything that has happened the crash started on October 14th with a few important announcements people started pulling out the stocks gradually on October 15th the selling and intensified going into to Friday. By this time, the market is down nine points. October 19th, the market falls an astounding 22.5%, Some things take place. Federal Reserve announcements hold possible suspension of SIBO uh, trading. The rumor clears up. The markets gain the momentum by the 21st. So as you can see, everything takes place within a very, very short amount of time. So how can we compare this situation to March 19th through the 23rd? So we've covered shortly what the markets were doing Monday. Of course, the Fed stocks that have been going forever. Your Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, you know, all the stocks that just seem to be unsinkable for years. All of a sudden, it begins with a stock that you would typically expect to be not very volatile, but Facebook does drop in one day to the extent of $15 and is closing down $13 for the day. The markets are down 381%. So the losses are uh, starting to begin. Now, on the 20th, similar to kind of sort of the market paused a little bit on the 15th of October, uh, you know, there's not any heavy selling notice, you know, going on, but, uh, you know, clearly there's some concerns that are being developed over the tariff war and the situation of what's going to take place with that. And the market partially is paused because they're waiting to see what's going to take place on Wednesday, the 23rd, what exactly is the Federal Reserve going to do with uh, interest rate hikes? How many times are they going to hike? Um, so the market is waiting for any possible surprises there. Now, interestingly to notice, and please stay tuned because the answer to this question will be given just shortly here in a little bit in the video, but when the Fed announces the rate hikes, something very, very odd happens which does not typically happen 
When Fed announces rate hikes, this is actually a very good thing for banking stocks. But the bank stocks are falling. Typically, when the Fed rate Fed announces rate, rate hikes, the dollar goes up, but it starts declining. To make the matters worse, when the rates go up, typically gold futures would decline, but gold futures start soaring. And not only they're soaring after the rate announcement, they were actually starting to soar early that day before the announcement was even made which is very, very unusual. We've seen a complete opposite response from the market from what we would typically observe. So going into Thursday, the selling at this point is definitely intensified and we're seeing a much bigger drop of 723 points. Friday the 23rd, China responds to tariffs, which at first seemed as maybe a very mild response because it's only placing tariffs on three billion of goods of United States opposed to United States placing you know on 60 millions of Chinese goods so it looks like a possible win the markets start to go a little bit higher and then they drop realizing that hold on China is actually using a very smart strategy instead of placing or taxing the goods that it imports from United States, what they're saying, they're actually going to stop buying U.S. treasuries, which could create unbelievable consequences for United States. So their response actually is much harsher than one would have expected. Yes, in the process, they in a way could hurt themselves somewhat, but long term, they're winning from such a move, and it's the United States that would suffer the most. The markets end up down for the day, this time 424 points. If we add the drop for the week, it does not necessarily equate to the 9% drop that we have seen in 1987, but it's not too far off. This is a very significant sell-off, totaling about 5.5% for the week. And... If we compare the graphs, they also look very, very similar. Okay, so the selling right here starts off on the 19th with the tax sell-off. Then the next day, everybody's waiting for the interest rate announcement. Uh, the very important thing to notice is on Monday, the market gaps down, which is a very bearish sign. It never closes this gap right here. And... It tries to make a move higher, an expectation of good news from Federal Reserve, and it ultimately fails. And, and uh, you know, just a day later, it gaps down again, uh, going into first and finishes the week severely, severely lower. Typically, that is a very bearish sign also going into, you know, the next week. So, again, we just showed you the graph of that. Let's, again, look at the graph. So, if we're going into... And compare the first few days of the crash, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing a similar pattern to where the markets were had more of an even fall and then they started falling much, much rapidly. So the key now is what is actually going to take place on Monday, right? The whole week, the whole news story is being about talking about the tariffs and the potential consequences, but if we really think about it, would the stocks really sell off to such an extent? Just we've been knowing about the tariffs last week, right? We've known that there will be responses from other nations. We've known and expected there will be a response from China. But yet the market did sell off significantly, particularly in the last few days. So certainly it cannot just be the tariffs. It cannot just be the quarter of a point minuscule interest rate hike, right? So what can actually be bringing the markets down? And I will give you the answer in the next three charts, which will also address this question right here. Why would the market 
completely respondent in a total different way. And the importance of trying to understand this and grasp this, for those of you that are trying to buy the markets on the dip, which was a great strategy, I agree, for the last nine years, when we're seeing a complete different reaction from the markets, not just in one group of stocks, not just you know in, in currency, not just in commodity, but when it is unanimously a completely opposite response from what you would expect the bank stocks to have, the dollar to have, and the gold futures to have, when they're doing this simultaneously, this may be a, a completely new shift into a totally new direction. And to me, I take this as a sign. I trade options every day. And to me, this is a clear sign that there's a total reversal in the market that is taking place right now. So what could this be? The three charts. Here's the answer. Take a look at the Deutsche Bank chart. This is Deutsche Bank chart going back to, you know, 2007. 2008, where we're still trading around $100 a shares. Okay, then now it's trading at $13.75. Let's take a closer look to see how Deutsche Bank was trading recently. And if you closely analyze, Deutsche Bank was actually not falling as much as the rest of the banking stuff, stocks in the financial sector, you know, during the crisis of 2007 2008. But yet, if you observe this graph, it is clearly trading much lower now than it did trade during the financial crisis in 2007-2008. So let's take a look at the last few days. And again, the sell-off starts on the, on the 19th. Now, why is the sell-off starting on the, on the 19th? I thought the technology stocks were selling off on the 19th. And more importantly to know, Deutsche Bank is not a very volatile stock. In other words, it does not make moves like Google and Amazon where, you know, it can move substantially, you know, 20, 30 bucks in one day. Or, you know, for it being sold around, you know, 16 to $20 level, you know, it would be a couple of dollar uh, move. It doesn't make big moves like that. You know, for a while it's been, you know, trading in the range between, again, 16 and 20, uh, you know, for, 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 for years. So, um, all of a sudden it makes an incredible move lower from, you know, literally, you know, 16 all the way to 1375 by the end of the week. What's also notable is look at these gaps lower that it keeps making each day. I mean, this is huge. Huge, huge sell-off. I mean, we barely see any gaps here. I mean, we, we see one here, but it quickly rebounds after this. The interesting the thing about these gaps is their consecutive gaps lower. And also notable, look at the volume. Look at this volume right here. I don't see any other sort of volume like this anywhere in this chart. And the selling again intensifies on Deutsche Bank going into the close. Look at the volume right here again. So what is going on here? And why is this the answer to the to the sell-off of the entire stock market? Well, take a look at the next chart where I combine in one chart Deutsche Bank and Lehman Brothers. This is your answer right here. And coincidentally, right before Lehman Brothers collapse, Take a look right here. It trades at the same price of $13.75 right here before it collapses brutally all the way down to practically zero. You can see some clear similarities how Deutsche Bank trades in the range right here. We're observing that Lehman Brothers was doing this as well. Okay, and all of a sudden here comes the collapse. So the question is. What comes Monday when it hits and starts trading below 1375 at the market open? So why do we think that Deutsche Bank could collapse? 
Well, there's too many reasons to be honest with you. I'm just going to list a few. It has an incredible exposure to the derivatives. And if you analyze some of the biggest crashes that took place in the history of financial markets, derivatives is like a curse word. No one has ever had a 14.7 trillion exposure in derivatives, but Deutsche Bank does. That exposure in derivatives could be compared to 20 times the German GDP and five times the entire Eurozone consistent of all the European countries' GDP. The leverage is insane and on top of everything, the bank is experiencing falling sales and rising costs at the same time. A lot of the rising costs are being attributed to the multiple fines from the IMF for repeated case of market manipulation. There's currently over 7,000 litigations and lawsuits that are that has been filed against Deutsche Bank, including a record suit for $14 billion from United States Security and Exchange Commission. Now, why could Deutsche Bank collapse be so crucial? And why could it take the markets down? Well, it carries a systematic risk. It affects not only all the European banks, it also affects a lot of major American banks like JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs and Bank of America and Morgan Stanley and Citigroup and Wells Fargo. It also affects banks in China. So it practically affects the global financial market. So how bad is Monday going to be? Are we going to see the Black Monday? I'm sure that's what you were thinking where I was going with that. But before I give you the answer to that question, let's take a look at another interesting fact. Ray Dalio, I observed, recently made a classic chess move, making it look like he was low on the market, meaning he was buying a bunch of shares. You actually probably can find a video on, 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 on my channel here where <laughs> with a title that says Ray Dalio from bull to bear in just a few days. Okay, well, I'm sure it was just a strategy he was using. As he would describe in the markets as a perfect Goldilocks opportunity, his actions spoke exactly the opposite. While he was saying those things, he went out there and shorted not one billion, not two billion, but 22 billion dollars against European stocks. Let's take a closer look. And of course, Ray Daly, for those of you that may not know, he is a one of the best world-renowned hedge fund managers that manages a fund of $160 billion in the United States. So here's an article about him describing the Goldilocks period. And surprise, surprise, Ray Dalio bets against German and Italian stocks. And who does he bet against? Deutsche Bank. Out of $22 billion short position against European stocks, $7.3 billion could potentially be a short position against Deutsche Bank. Now, an interesting thing that I have been observing is what I call a Bitcoin versus the market indicator. And please pay close attention and I'm trying to break this down. And I know there's a lot of uh, skeptics out there, but it's okay. You can be a skeptic. You can say that Bitcoin you know, has an inverse relationship with the market. They have no relationship. What I have found out is what I'm trying to share with you and what I believe is true. This indicator has worked really, really well for me. So what exactly am I talking about here? Well, 
the graph right here in the bright blue and bright red represents Bitcoin price action. The graph in green and red with thinner lines is S&P 500. Point one on the Bitcoin price action graph represents its highest traded level or its stop in December. Roughly three to four weeks later, United States stock market hits the top. Then we're observing what Bitcoin price action does. It falls from point one to point two. United States market three or four weeks later falls from point one to point two. And hopefully you can see that this green line right here is going all the way down to point two. That's why point two is here. So this line right here basically says that point two here corresponds to point two in the overall stock market right here. Or in this particular case, this is a graph of S&P 500 futures index. Point three would be represented in the S&P 500 index right here. Point four would be represented right here. As you can see from point four, the Bitcoin price action when it goes to point five, point number five makes the biggest drop. Now it is not as fast of a drop as it makes from point one to point two. This drop from point four to point five takes much longer but it is a much more severe drop in terms of percentages. Right now we're observing 0.4 right here in the S&P 500. And it has roughly made half of that move. So if I am using this Bitcoin indicator, in my opinion, S&P 500 still has substantially to go lower. Now in his description, which Ray Dahlia is also a bear in Bitcoin, but he doesn't have, I believe, a short position in it. At least I don't know about it. But in this picture, he was trying to basically show how much lower he thinks the market is going to go. <laughs> and in my opinion, this is about how much lower this Bitcoin predictor shows that Bitcoin can fall lower. And again, I know there's skeptics out there that says Bitcoin is going to a million. That's fine. I'm just giving you my opinion. And so far, I've been able and been very fortunate to short Bitcoin at point 0.1. I've been able to short it at point 0.34 and also been able to short it at point right here at 11.5. Okay, actually right here after which it went lower to about eight nine thousand range it went back back up again to eleven five and i've recently been doing videos again around eight nine thousand dollar range saying it was going to drop lower all the way to four thousand so if you're curious to find out how to profit from the next market move in other words how do you make money when bitcoin falls how do you make money when stock markets fall visit marketcrash.money Find out more information why market crash could be a definite possibility in 2018, why Bitcoin crash could be a definite possibility. But more importantly, how you can take advantage of the market crash before it takes advantage of you. Click right here, how to profit, schedule your one-on-one -on -one consultation. Do it today because the markets could be going lower substantially. And I want you to have your short positions open so you can take advantage of this market drop. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're a brand new trader, you know nothing about options, okay? Or if you're a long-term investor that wants to profit from a substantial market move lower over the course of the next year or two. The typical strategy is to profit from the markets by buying stocks and holding them. And when markets go down, the typical investment strategy is to buy gold. But unfortunately, the general public, as I find out, does not know how to profit from buying put options, how to profit from buying stocks, or sometimes when they do think about it, they don't know exactly what stocks make sense to short, what stocks make sense to buy put options on. So if you're curious, if you'd like to learn more about that, again, click right here, how to profit and schedule your consultation. Now back to our discussion of how low can this market go? How low can the S&P 
go. In my estimate, it can go to 2200, and here's why. I pulled up the daily graph, the S&P 500. The question that I post here is, will the market stop right here at the short-term 200-day moving average? Well, we're clearly seeing that what I called a couple of weeks ago, I put a video that was going over uh, a possible double top in the market. I've observed that a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it did become true, so I'm hoping I'm also correct in my future estimates about where this market is going. Uh, if you're interested in knowing how I identified this double top, please find the video I posted literally a couple of weeks ago and get some more detailed information how I was able to identify this double top situation, which double top refers, for those of you that may not know, at a situation that is a bearish pattern that occurs when the market tries to break out higher twice in a row and it fails, which creates a great opportunity for you to short the stocks or, um, or buy put options and profit from when the markets fall. If you would have, have done that on some of the stocks, uh, you know, you would have profited it significantly uh, because you would have been able to capture this move here from 2800 all the way to 2588. Now, what makes me think that S&P 500 is actually going lower? Well, there's a few patterns that I am observing here still, okay? Number one, um, the RSI is very bearish, but it's not at the 30 level, okay? It's at 45, which tells me there's still room for more selling. Um, if you'd like to know how to use some of the indicators, you know, we do that in our one-on-one -on -one consultation. We offer a course that you can sign up with. Again, it's going to be one-on-one -on -one course where you can learn all those things where you're going to be able to utilize all this knowledge to be able to make your own decisions and put on your own strategies on analyzing different stocks and market conditions. As you can see previously, in 2016, S&P index touched the 200-day moving average. Now, it tested the 200-day moving average right here as you can see after that it bounced back. So the ultimate question of the day is Black Monday going to be Black Monday? Are the markets going to drop 22 percent like they did on October 19th? The answer is most likely not. But could this move lower to the 2200 range take place over the course of the next few weeks? I think the answer is yes. So looking at the Bitcoin indicator, in other words, I'm not seeing a substantial, substantial sell-off. Now, can we see another Monday where we're going, you know, 700 points, 1,000 points lower? Sure. But I'm not seeing that the market is going to automatically crash and go lower by 22% as it did in 1987. However, I think that move overall can happen over the course of the next 30 days. Uh, now, what makes me think that the market is going to sort of not have any huge moves necessarily lower, it could have substantial moves, but not huge like the 1987 crashes. Right now, we're approaching this support level, this blue line, this 50-day moving average at 2588. Um, you know, we could see potentially it going a little bit slightly below that, and then we may be seeing some buyers coming in, okay? But if you do the numbers, right, if you take the numbers at the 2850 high of S&P 500, if you take actually 22.7% off of that, which would be the exactly the, the biggest drop in United States history, which took place on October 19th, 1987. If you take that and you subtract the numerical value of that from 2850 you will actually get 2200, which in this particular case of S&P index coincides with a 200 day moving average of $2,200. So I believe there is another move lower of 388 points on S&P. So if you're thinking, well, how do I profit from this? Definitely go to marketcrash.money and schedule your consultation because the opportunity is still there. You have not missed out on the market move lower 
yet. The opportunity to make money is still there. Now, you may ask me, well, what else making you think that the market is going lower? Well, there's some other indicators, for example, the MACD indicator. In this particular case, not trying to get into a lot of details, but when the black line crosses the orange line, this is a bearish pattern. Um, we can also see a reversal of a pattern from the bullish pattern here. At the same time, the black line crosses. We can see the reversal of a pattern. It looks like it has substantially, it has definitely room to go lower from there. So there's a few indicators that are definitely there. If we take a closer look at the Dow, how low is the Dow going to go? Well, the net, of course, the easy answer would be 23,357, which would be the 200-day moving average right here on your daily graph. If we look at the longer term, and we use the same 22.7% possible drop, we will arrive at a figure if we take the 22.7% of 26.5 and we're going to subtract that from the 26.5, we'll get an answer of 20,484. So that would represent another move roughly of 3,200. So if some of you were wondering in my previous video that was titled could the market drop another 3,200 points? That's exactly how I came up with that number. I took the drop in the 1987 crash of 22.7% in the Dow. I subtracted it actually from the top trading range of Dow, which was 26.5. You take that figure, you subtract it, you will get a number of 20,400 roughly. If you take the current closing range where it closed at 23.5, you subtract that, you will get roughly 3,200 without getting too specifics to the dollars and cents and stuff like that, okay? Now, there's a lot of signs actually that we can point out that clearly shows us that Dow is going to be moving lower. Now, what are those signs? Okay, of course, the RSI, your relative strength thing, that's, is very bearish. And a lot of times when it goes to under 30, it's considered to be oversold. But in this particular case, of course, if we look at the longer time frame, again, we're not trying to say that, you know, it's going to make that 20% move lower on Monday or Tuesday. We're saying it can have a substantial move lower, like maybe another 700 points, another 1,000 points, but we're not saying it's going to make a 20% drop. So if, you know, because we're expecting that move lower over the course of the next three or four weeks, uh, a better time frame to use for analysis of this would be the weekly chart for the Dow. And on the weekly chart, the RSI is still at 45. So in my opinion, it still has room to move lower. Um, I put that black square here, which is definitely a bearish sign. When you see a lot of these red candles uh, going simultaneously, literally one after another, and the market is pretty much still at the all-time high. This is a very bearish sign because clearly it shows us a pattern. And please, don't pay attention to what they're telling you in the news because that's exactly what they're doing. They're telling you that the analysts are still bullish on the market. They're telling you to go ahead and buy the dip. They're telling you to, that the stocks are going to recover and they're going to go higher, that the economy is robust. Well, while they're doing that, let me ask you a question. If the economy is robust, why do they continuously revise the GDP numbers? Why are these numbers are being revised from 5.4 for the first quarter all the way down to 1.7? So the truth is the economy is not doing that great. Okay, and you know the interest rates are going higher, and there's just a lot of reasons why the markets could go lower besides the reasons that I was given in the previous video and this video right here. But what I'm trying to do is point out why the market could actually go could actually go lower. So I'm noticing a lot of selling right here at the, at the top. So every time it tries to go higher, the banks are using this as an opportunity to sell the stocks, not to buy. Clearly, it's a totally different pattern from when you look at the Dow Jones going on the way higher. Look, you're, you see a lot of white candles. Yes, you see some red, but they're nothing in relation to the 
size of these red candles here and also important to know the volume you see a lot a lot of red volume here so you see the volume is actually increasing on the way lower and you see the volume um, is not as strong on the way higher so clearly the first answer for how low the Dow can go is 23,357 and that number is taken from the 200 day moving day average on the daily graph which is 23,357 right here okay what makes me think that it's going to keep falling lower again we're using the MACD indicator where the black line crosses the orange line here so it's definitely a bearish sign I'm also seeing on your accumulation distribution okay that um, it's been hitting a lot of you know this could be considered like a double top one top here another top here what I would call triple quad and quadra top now a lot of times just like you see on this graph as far as the price action okay it tries to make a double top one sometimes it doesn't have to be a perfect top as you can see this top was just it slightly got above the 50-day moving average and then it dropped after that but which you can see this is a, a, a double top and then they go substantially lower in this case in my experience the more tops is created than in the pattern the harder the fall is going to be so I'm expecting the accumulation distribution to go significantly lower here which makes me think that Dow is going to also go significantly lower so we're seeing bearish patterns everywhere here um, you know lots of selling at the top but another thing to be aware of is as we clearly see it's just a chess move the analysts keep raising targets on the stock prices while they're actually doing what? They're accumulating their short positions. Ray Dalio is telling you that the economy is great and it's the Goldilocks economy while he's betting $22 on the other side of the equation. So pay attention to some signs like that. Okay. If you have any questions, again, go to marketcrash.money, schedule your consultation. It's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. There's not going to be a hundred people there in a webinar with you. We're going to target your investment strategy specifically to your goals and needs. I know a lot of people got hurt in the dot-com crash. I know a lot of people got hurt financially in the in, in 2007, 2008, and maybe there's some of you that are watching that still remember how it might have impacted you and you know in, in in some of the other times before that so if you're looking to profit and prosper from this type of market environment I know it's not natural to be short in stocks I know it is not natural to be profiting on the fall but if you haven't done this before the markets do fall much faster than they go up and it creates a huge opportunity to create wealth in a very short amount of time so if you're interested in not just keeping your assets safe but you're interested in increasing your wealth opportunities like that come very very rare in our lifetime and this is one of those opportunities so if you're interested in learning how to trade if you're interested in discovering a long-term strategy get in touch with me schedule your consultation and do it now do not miss the opportunity of your lifetime